Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel, I play Dungeons & Dragons with my friends, and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics, use it to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Saracen Zero, and today I'm joined by Longfish, Blind Oracle, Azure Wolf, and Dingo. Together, we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons & Dragons. Whether you're a new player trying to gain experience and level up your game, a seasoned fighter trying to learn some new tricks and maintain your edge, or a dungeon master who wants to get the most out of your challenges, join us as we slice and dice our way through Monsters and Mayhem and evaluate the tactics that decide who makes it onto the boss fight and who's going to be reaching for a fresh character sheet. In this series, the players are controlling the characters straight out of the starter set. I'm Dingo, I'm playing the fighter. I'm Blind Oracle, I'm playing the Thief Halfling Rogue. I'm Major Wolf, and I'm playing the Wizard. I'm Longfish, I'm playing the Dwarven Clerk. At level 8, our daring adventurers are trying to investigate the cause of iron deliveries that have dried up. They'll have to face six encounters, all based on this theme, before they get to a long rest and level up to level 9. This is the 8th encounter in the starter set series, so if you missed the start, you can find a link to it in the description below. Let's review what the players have at the start of the dungeon. Class is the Wizard, it's level 8. Spells on the list today would be Polymorph, Banishment, Slow, Haste, Fireball, Counterspell, Web, Shatter, Gust of Wind via the Wind Fan, Enlarge, Reduce, Shield, Magic Missile, Magic Armor, and Find Familiar to the Ritual, and Fly. Find Familiar and Owl. I cast Mage Armor. I'm Blind Oracle. I'm playing the level 8 Rogue. No spells to speak of. No abilities that are sort of a consumable ability, like short rest or anything like that. We're up to 4d6 sneak dice. The newest thing is evasion, so I save for full on uh, any kind of dexterity-based saves at this point. And I now have Bracers of Archery that add 2 to my damage because they're attuned. Dingo's playing a level 8 fighter, 76 HP. Uh, I got second wind, action surge, improved criticals, so I'm critting on 19 and 20. Gauntlets of Ogre Power, Potion of Stone Giant Strength, Ring of Jumping, and uh, Adamantine Chainmail. So I'm immune to criticals. I am playing the Dwarf Clerk. I am currently at 67 hit points. I have four first level spell slots, three second level spell slots, three third level spell slots, and two fourth level spell slots. Currently wearing Cloak of Protection on, and Chainmail with a plus one shield. Wielding my Warhammer. Currently prepared spells are Bless, Cure Wounds, Guiding Bolt, Healing Ward, Inflict Wounds, 8. Holt Person, Lesser Restoration, Prayer of Healing, Spiritual Weapon, Warding Bond, Animate Dead, Beacon of Hope, Dispel Magic, Mass Healing Ward, Revivify, Spirit Guardians, Banishment, Death Ward, Freedom of Movement, and Guardian of Faith. I am going to precast Aid at 3rd level, targeting my 3 allies. Each target's hit point maximum and current hit points increases by 10 for the duration. All the encounters use monsters straight out of the monster manual, with no modifications or adjustments. Encounters are based on challenge ratings from that book. I'll control the monsters and do my best to put as many adventures into the ground as possible. As we go, we'll talk about the choices that we made, why they fit the characters that the players are using, and what mistakes we made along the way. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. 76 hit points, and magical great axe in hand. Second wind available, axe and surge available. Short bow plus one in hand, 61 out of 61 hit points with the recently cast buff, and that's it. Asia Wolf is sitting at 60, 60 hit points. Arcane Recovery is still up. Four first level slots, three second level slots, three third, and two fourth level slots. My hand is the Wand of the War Mage and my spell book. Currently at 67 hit points, I have four first level spell slots, three second level spell slots, two third level spell slots, and two fourth level spell slots. I'm currently wielding my Warhammer and my shield, and I have both of my channel divinity up. A local dude has asked you to investigate the cause of the iron shortage from within the jungle where the iron mine is. The animals in the area have been acting quite strangely. The adventurers will try to investigate why the iron deliveries have dried up and what is causing the environment to react so strangely. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. There is one Etten, and Etten is a double-headed giant. Ettens have multi-attack, they have battle axes in one hand, morning stars in the other. There are two heads, give them advantage on wisdom saves to 
avoid certain conditions, but otherwise they're pretty stupid, easy to hit, just have a ton of hit points as most giants do. There's also a swarm of edder caps. Edder caps are like, imagine a two-legged spider. They have spider climb, web sense, web walker, they can shoot webs, they can claw and they can bite, but it's actually a two-legged creature. And then we have a number of kobolds. There are four kobolds. Kobolds are CR 1-8 monsters. They have slings and daggers. They have pack tactics. They also have sunlight sensitivity. So unless they're using their pack tactics to get advantage, they're going to have disadvantage on all of their attack rolls because they're not great in the sunlight. But that's where the forest is. So that's what you guys are going up against. Terrain and effects. This map has a bunch of cliffs on it. The cliffs are a DC 15 athletics check to climb and the cliffs go up, they shoot upward at a 45 degree angle. So every five feet from the base of the cliff, i.e. where there is no cliff terrain, that will be an additional five feet of climbing that you'll have to go upward. There's also a bunch of difficult terrain, a couple of trees, the stumps of which are impassable terrain. That's what we're looking at for terrain. What do you guys think about for tactics? Spirit Guardian? It's a valid choice. There's no like choke point we can hold. If we hide at the bottom of the cliff, they can still shoot at us, right? They're, like they don't block line of sight. The cliffs block line of sight, but you could hide at the face of the cliff from them, depending on the angle. That is certainly a possibility. They have a lot of movement though, right? They have 30 feet of movement. They can move up and down cliffs. So header caps can spider climb, so they can just climb over the surfaces without making a ability check. They'll probably just be able to climb down to look at you, do their ranged attack, and then climb back. Oh, they all have ranged attack. I think honestly, till the cobalt's get in range, we should focus on single focus, but those cobalts probably have the lower HP out of the bunch, so that'll be the quicker targets to get the action economy down. Do we stay where we are, or do we move towards somewhere? Do we move north? Problem is, is they're, they're just going to climb around you guys. If we move north, we can at least get out of line of sight of a few of them, and we'll get shot immediately. Force them to move around a bit. All right, so it sounds like head to the north, kobolds are the priority. Try to stay on the line of sight of the ranged attacks. Any other thoughts before we roll initiative? It's gonna come down to initiative. Always does. All right, go ahead and roll initiative. Anybody have higher than a 20? Anybody have between a 20 and a 15? Anybody have between a 15 and a 10? Clerk goes at 12. 11 on the owl. Who has between a 10 and a 5? 9 for the rogue. 8 on the wizard. I have a 6. I have a 5 on the end. Hey, dead end. So you guys are going to all go first. That's what you want. Cleric, you're up first. Move me diagonal up 4. I'm going to cast Spirit Guardian there, nominating all my allies, and that's me. After that, we go to the Owl. The hidden cap that's directly east of us, let's aggravate it for the Rogue, and then tuck him near to Cleric and the Spirit Guardian towards the north there. After that, we're going to go to the Rogue. Well, let's start by shooting the Edder Cap directly in front of us that I've got advantage on, and then we'll go from there. 23 to hit. 23 of connect. 26 points of damage. I don't suppose he's dead. He's not. Shoot. Fort the shot. Then we will take four on the diagonal behind the cleric and then take a bonus action to hide. What are you at now? Plus 11. 18. 18 will do it. And after that, we're going to go to the wizard. Shoot and run. So firebolt and that is nat 20. 17. Starting those off early. And let's get right next to that rogue. After that, we go to the fighter. Can you put me southeast of the cleric? I will throw a javelin at the nearest natural 20 to hit. All right, yeah, sure. The resignation in your voice is palpable. That's bad when you get two nat 20s in the first round. 15 damage. He had one hit point left. I really shouldn't be complaining about it, but yeah, two crits in a row is, uh, that's the thing. Yeah, 15 damage will drop that guy. And my the Etten and his colleagues. The order goes buff, range attacks, melee attack. This guy, move him... He's going to move to there as a dash. He's going to dash as well to there. And then over here is where it's going to happen. This guy's going to move to there. He's going to spit web at the fighter. He's got a plus four. He's going to get a nat one. That'll fail. Over here, he's going to dash to there. This guy, he can't get within range. He's going to go to there. The Etten, if he charges in there, now he's going to wait until the buffs go off because you guys aren't doing much. So he's going to walk over here and dodge. And then the Kobolds. Kobolds have a 120 foot disadvantage range. They're going to move to here. You got cover, but that's fine. They have disadvantage for sunlight. They have disadvantage for range. But they don't stack, so that's fine. He's got plus four to hit you. You got plus two cover for the Edder Cap, who I shouldn't have put there. We're going to get a 15 to hit you. Miss. 11 to hit you. Uh, drop the 19 for a 13 to hit you. Oh, there it is. 21 to hit. You get plus two for cover. Oh, that'll hit me. Take three points of bludgeoning damage. That's me. After that, we're going to go to top of the order, Longfish. Pop out to the right, one step. Take a shot at spider thing straight south of me. A sacred flame. Dex save, 16. He's going to fail. Take a measly six damage. I'll back up. After that, we're going to go to the owl. So... 
I can see the one that just came behind us, right? The wizard has line of sight. The owl just not. So I can tell it to aggravate the thing for the rogue because I know there's a creature coming behind us. Yeah, you can also hear them. They're not being stealthy. So let's do that. Let's aggravate that thing behind us for the rogue. And then return to the same spot. Yep. After the owl is the rogue, blind oracle. Let's go ahead and take a step diagonal to the northwest. Shoot the utter cap at advantage. I believe a 28 will hit. Yep. Another 26 points of damage. And then let's go ahead and tuck back in next to the cleric again. Is the space in front of the cleric underbrush that I can hide in? Yes, absolutely. I'd like to go there and I'd like to take the hide action. A 19. 19 will do it. After the rogue, we go to the wizard. Here's your wall. Firebolt to the north. 14. 14 will connect. 15 on the die. And let's step to the east two spaces. That way they have to come into the spirit guardians. After that, we're going to go to Dingo. I'm going to move south and get in the melee range of that. And I'm going to swing my axe. Uh, 21 to hit. 21 connects. 11 damage for my next trick. 20-something to hit. Yep, 20-something will connect. 13 more damage. End my turn. After that, we're going to go to my turn. First thing to do is recharge the used ability. He succeeds in recharging it, although he is within melee range of you, so he's probably not going to want to spit a ranged weapon at you. So instead, let's use the other guys. He'll move to there to remove the cover and try to spit web at you. 23 to hit you with the web. Oh, hit. And you are restrained by the webbing. You can try to break out as an action against a DC 11 strength check on your turn. You can also destroy the webbing. It has AC of 10, 5 hit points, vulnerable to fire, and immune to bludgeoning, poison, and psychic damage. All right, Longfish, shoot me with fire. I don't know that Longfish has a fire attack. They probably need the wizard. This guy is going to make his attacks against you. He has advantage because you are restrained. He's got a bite attack and a claw attack. Here's the bite. 20 to hit. That'll hit. Kindly take 8 points of piercing damage and 1 point of poison damage. That's 9 total. And give me a constitution save DC 11 versus poison. 20. You are not poisoned for the next minute. Then the second attack is a claw attack. He's going to get a 14 to hit you with the claws. That'll miss. This guy is going to jump in and do the same thing. Here's the bite. Nat 20. I am immune to but I hit, so take 5 points of piercing and 7 points of poison for a total of 12 points of damage. Another DC 11 constitution save. 12 count. 12 will make it. You are not poisoned by this guy either. Over here, we're going to spit web at the wizard, just to remove any cover. That'll be a 21 to hit the wizard. Ooh, yeah, that's definitely going to connect. He's going to stand up there and spit web on the cleric. 18 to hit your cleric. Mm, nope. Those are all my potential buff attacks. The Etten. The Etten is going to go after the fighter, hopefully. You're restrained, so he's going to get advantage on his attacks. The battle axe is going to swing for plus 7. He's going to get a 15 to hit you. That'll miss. And a morning star. He's going to get a 22 to hit you. That'll hit. 12 points of piercing damage from the Morning Star. First Kobold is going to take his shot. These are at disadvantage because of the range. He's going to get a 6. Nope. And then move out of the way. Next one's going to move in. He's going to get a 10 and move out of the way. The next one's going to move in. He's going to get a 14, move out of the way. And the last one's going to move in. And he's going to drop the nat 20 for a 13 and move out of the way. I think all of those are going to miss you. Correct. And those are... All of my guys. After that, we go to the cleric. Let's see. Can you free me? He's walking to the big group of people. Yeah, I'll try to break him. The one attack, right? Webb has an AC of 10, 5 hit points, vulnerable to fire and immunity to bludgeoning, which is probably going to make this not happen, poison and psychic damage. Okay. Yeah, I have a hammer. <laughs> Let's see. Too bad you don't have a dagger. Activate your knife hand. Would radiant damage? Radiant damage would do it. What are you thinking as far as doing the radiant damage? Sacred flame. Sacred flame, I think, has to target a creature, right? I can just do a strength check and try to break it, right? That's not an option here. As an action, the restrained creature can make a DC 11 strength check. So since you're not restrained, you can't. So you could summon a spirit weapon to hit it. Spirit weapon does force damage. That's true. Yeah. Bonus action, cast spirit weapon. L2. And spiritual weapon is going to try to attack the uh, web. 16 to hit. 16 will connect. Does a total of 12 damage. 12 points of force damage will drop that. You are no longer restrained, wizard. All right. That's a bonus action. What else you got? Dodge. Mm hmm. Makes sense. I'm going to stand to the north west of the fighter after that we're gonna go to the owl again let's aggravate the same one we did before northwest there for the rogue putting him in the circle of friendship above the cleric after that we're gonna go to the rogue well let's go ahead and shoot the one to the sort of north west there that was aggravated well there's the crit yeah give me some damage do we have to take a dice break 
This is where he adds up 97 points of damage for zero to tell us he had one HP. 44 damage. He has three hit points. <laughs> Jesus. There it is. He just wanted to make sure it was dead. Wanted to make very sure. You got a bonus action left. Hide again? Yeah, I think we're going to take the hide action again. 31. Okay, yep, not 20 plus 11. That'll do it. After that, we go to the wizard. We've got four there, so that's usually my rule of thumb for a fireball. If I center it on the end, can I get the one to the north there is the question. Yeah, you can You can get all of those. That's the plan, then. Can you hit my web and not me? Yeah, actually, I think I can. Let's go read Fireball, when in doubt. The fire spreads around corners. It ignites flammable objects in the area that aren't being worn or carried. Hey. So you are no longer restrained by the webbing. DC 16 dex. Damage. That is 33? 33 or 16. Okay. The guy up here, he's going to fail. He's going to take 33. Furthest guy is going to take his save. He's going to pass. So he's going to take 16. The guy directly below the fighter, oh, he's going to die either way. And then the guy to the southeast of the fighter is going to pass. He's going to take just 16. And then the Etten is going to fail. He's going to take 33. 131 damage total. Good job. That's an action. What else you got? We're moving in. Don't want to move one more south just to make that thing have to take an attack opportunity if it leaves. You don't have a weapon out. Uh, that's right. You can always punch. Yeah, I have the wand of the war mage. But yeah, I got you. Even if you don't have a weapon out, it causes a disadvantage on range attacks, which they are known to do. So after that, we're going to go to the fighter. It's time for my signature move. All right, I'm going to swing my axe on the purple guy in the southeast. So close. Uh, 18 to hit. 18 connects. 16 damage. Oh, boy. 13 to hit. 13 will connect. That's what you need. You found the number. The old 8 damage. I'll action surge 19. 19 hits. 15 damage. 15 damage. That'll drop him because he's got 4 left. And then a crit on the Eden. Okay, thanks. Oh, yeah, brother. Oh, you're going to love this one. I rolled a 1 and a 2. 9 damage. A massive crit there. Solid crit. And my turn on that. After there, we're going to go to the... Etten and his friends. My recharge abilities. I'm gonna try to recharge this web. He's gonna succeed. I'm gonna try to recharge this web. He's gonna fail. Recharged is going to move to there and shoot a web down at the fighter. He's gonna get a six to hit your fighter. Little miss. He's gonna start his life in the circle. Wisdom 16. Fails. Takes 17 damage. 17 damage. Okay. He's gonna try to bait the shield out of the wizard. He's got plus four to hit you. Eight to hit you, wizard. Miss. And then the second attack with claws, 22. Okay. So the claw is going to do five points of slashing damage. You concentrating or anything? Nope. Normally I would go with the kobolds next, but the Etten is in the way. So we're going to move the Etten. He's going to start his turn off in the circle. Wisdom 16, 12 or 6. He's going to take the 12 because he's not that wise. I guess we're already in here. We might as well try to turn off the damage. The fighter is easier to hit. We're going to go to there, out of the way of the kobolds. He's at plus 7 to hit the fighter. So the first attack is a 24 to hit your fighter. That'll hit. Big hit. Take 14 points of slashing damage from a battle axe. Second attack is a 20 to hit you. And it'll hit. 13 points of piercing damage from the Morning Star. Now cheese. You good? I'm at 18 HP. We're going to go to here, walk over to that spot, take a shot at the fighter. Kobolds have pack tactics, so they have advantage on attack rolls against a creature if at least one of the kobold's allies is within five feet of the creature and the ally is not incapacitated. The Eden checks both of those boxes, so I'm going to get advantage to hit you, disadvantage for range. Those will cancel out. This is just a regular shot. I'm going to get a 21 to hit with the kobold. Whew. Ow. Take five points of bludgeoning damage, and then the kobold's going to walk away. You're going to get slung shot to death. Hopefully. 13 to hit you. Those kobolds are on point. 21 to hit you. Yep. Take four points of damage. And 14 to hit you. That'll miss. After my guys, we're going to go to the longfish. Bonus action, move the spiritual weapon down to the Yedin. And let's hit the Yedin. 26 to hit. That'll connect. For a total of 9 damage. And I will dodge. After that, we're going to go to the owl. Southwest one, let's aggravate it for the rogue. After that, we're going to go to Blind Oracle. Let's go ahead and use that aid. Shoot the one of the southwest at advantage. It's a 17 hit. 17 connects. For 24 points of damage. Bonus action, hide. 24 to hide. 24 will hide. After that, we're going to go to the Asia Wolf. Etten's not the play. It's still the cat to get rid of them. So Firebolt, 19 plus 9, 28. 28 connects. 9 points of damage. And I think I'm good where I am. After that, we're going to go to the Dingo. Okay, you all know what time it is. I'm going to swing my axe at the sudden. 14 to hit. 14 connects. Nice. 
12 damage, 19 to hit. 19 hits. 10 damage. 10 is exactly what you needed. He had 10 hit points. He drops. Got him. I'm going to move all my movement towards the kobolds. Second wind. It's a bonus action, right? Yes. HP. After that, we're going to go to the Ettons. Well, not the Ettons, just the Ettons friends. Recharge ability. We're going to fail that. Edder Cap is going to... Yeah, he doesn't have the movement to climb down there. Doesn't want to jump. Can't survive the fall. So he's going to have to go around. One of the kobolds is going to move forward. Very unkobold like He's going to move to there and dodge. The rest of the kobolds will get advantage from this, and they're going to sling you. First one's going to get a 14 to hit. Oh, miss. Second one, going to get an 18 to hit. That will hit. Take three points of bludgeoning damage. And the third one is going to get a 14 to hit. It'll miss. After that, we go to Claret. Move me one diagonal up and then four to the east. I will throw a Sacred Flame at the top further away, Kobold. Okay, what's the range on Sacred Flame? 60 feet. 60 feet. You do not have it. Can't catch them. If you dash, you can catch them. Get the one in front of you. Well, you can do that with the bonus action. The hammer is going to do that, right? No, I'm going to Sacred Flame that guy since I don't have to aid. Before you do that, there's a purple guy in the north and he's not dodging. Oh, right. Sacred Flame doesn't care about dodge. It does. It's a dexterity scene. Never mind. Yeah. I will send the Sacred Flame up against the purple scene then. He's going to fail. Nine damage. Nine points of damage. That is lethal. Nice. And then I will send the spiritual weapon after the kobold. Disadvantage to hit. That's a 13 to hit. Yeah. 13 connects. For nine damage. Nine points of damage. You got it. That's me. Ow. That's way more than 60, so let's move them to that southeast rock crop the area there. Thank you. After the owl's the rope. Just time to start huffing, I guess. You are 100 feet away from them at the moment. Oh, what's the range on a short bow? One second. 80. 16 squares. Uh, let's go ahead and move up behind the cleric. You got it. That should put me within. Yep, you're within range. Bonus action, hide behind the cleric, because reasons. Specifically that your specific type of halfling can hide behind medium and larger creatures. 21. 21 will do it. And then we will shoot at the middle kobold. Their passive perception is 3. 17 to hit. 17 connects. This guy has no idea where the arrow came from. You know that old trick of coming in from out of the sun so that they can't see you? That's what you're doing, but it's everywhere. The sun for them is everywhere. 31 points of damage. 31 points of damage. Killed him six times over. That's my turn. After the rogue is the wizard. Move to the northeast there and fire bolts and one down range. I got 120 range on this thing. So might as well use it. That's a 21. 21 will connect. 15. 15 drops him. That's it. After that, we're going to go to the fighter. I will move up. 30 feet and throw a javelin. Disadvantage for the range? 18. 18 connects. For a big old 8 damage. And the kobold will draw. Report hit points. 16 out of 76. 61 out of 61. 55 out of 60. 67 out of 67. Does anyone want to take actions at the end of encounter? I'm going to cast a channel divinity. I'll try to bring and go up to half. It'll give me 20 healing. With the first layer of defenses removed, the adventurers will move in deeper into the forest and try to figure out what has stopped the flow of iron from deeper in the jungle. One encounter down, five more to go before the long rest. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope you'll join us next week as the adventure continues. I'm Saracen Zero, and I will see you next time.